Hey, what's up guys? Welcome to episode two of my portfolio analysis series. My name is Frank Larsek and today I'm going to be doing a brief stock analysis of the second position in my dividend portfolio, People's United Financial, ticker symbol PBCT. If you did miss it, make sure to check out the first video in this series, which I went over Nokia stock, so I'll leave a link up here. And if you do appreciate these kind of videos, make sure to like and subscribe to show your support. And without further ado, let's jump right in. So one of the first things that I like to look at uh, when I'm looking at a company is just uh, looking at the investors relations page, uh, looking at what the company has to say about themselves and looking at some of their basic financials and uh, recent reports. So right now we're on the People's United uh, investor relations page and we're just gonna read what they are. Um, so they are a diversified financial services company with more than $60 billion in assets. Founded in 1842, they're a premier community-based nor regional Northeast bank with more than 5,500 employees, offering commercial and retail banking as well as wealth management services. They have a network of over 400 locations in Connecticut, New York, Massachusetts, Vermont, New Hampshire, and Maine, including over 148 convenient stop and shop branch locations in Connecticut and New York, offering full service and extended hour banking. Whether it is for personal or business needs, our customers and their needs come first, we value ongoing relationships, not just one-time transactions that give us the opportunity to listen, learn, respond, anticipate, and solve problems in a collaborative manner. Our priority is showing respect for our customers and having that return through their ongoing trust. So People's United is um, generally a pretty small bank compared to something huge like JP Morgan. They're mostly just in the Northeast. And honestly, most of their business is just in Connecticut. Um, so that's something to keep in mind. So next, uh, I'm just gonna look at some of the highlights from their most recent annual report from the end of 2019. So as you can see, uh, just their income uh, from net interest, uh, that's always good to see is increasing pretty steadily over the last few years. Uh, their net income is also increasing pretty steadily, which is good to see. Um, these are just some basic things. I'm not really going into depth in depth too much here, um, but you can see their assets are steadily increasing. Um, the amount they're loaning out to people are steadily increasing. So all those things are, I think, good uh, signs that sh show increasing business. Um, and then if we go down here, uh, over the past few years, their EPS has been growing. Uh, actually, it declined a little bit in 2019, um, but that's all right. And then for the dividends, they do pay dividends right now. Uh, they've been increasing them about one cent a year, which isn't much. We'll look at uh, the growth in a little bit. Um, but what I like to see is that their payout ratio was uh, a lot higher, and now it's a lot lower. It was in the 70s, now it's in the 50s, which is a lot better place to be. And so I'm thinking and hoping that maybe they've been increasing that dividend just a small amount um, so that they can work on lowering that payout ratio. And then maybe in the future, they will be able to increase that dividend uh, more quickly because they already have a low payout ratio at this point. Um, so that's just something I sort of thought about, but uh, who knows if that'll actually happen. So now we're on the uh, earnings report from Q3 of 2020, which is the most recent ending September 30th. Um, so the one thing I wanna point out here is that most of their values, like their income, their earnings, um, they're up uh, year over year. So you could see from June to September, so from quarter two to quarter three, there's a pretty big jump in most of these numbers, um, but I think that's just because June uh, was heavily affected by the pandemic, but you can still see that they have recovered very well because uh, most of these numbers are well above or slightly above the September 30th numbers from last year. So that's really good to see. Um, so you can see their average balances of loans and deposits. Those are all higher than last year um, and their income and earnings and, uh, those types of things are even better than last year. So that's good to see. So I also wanna look at what the uh, CEO had to say about some of the effects of the pandemic. And that's, uh, he said, the total impact of the pandemic on the long-term economy is unknown. However, improvements in economic activity during the quarter provide us a level of cautious optimism as we look ahead. And one thing I wanna point out is that customers needing relief as total loan deferrals were approximately 1.6 billion at September 30th, down from more than 7.1 billion at the end of June. Uh, so I can show, that shows that basically the company is doing a lot better and their clients um, and people they work with are doing a lot better as well. So that's really all good signs for the economy and for this company. Um, but he is stressing that uh, it's a cautious optimism. So uh, we don't want to get too excited. But right now it's looking pretty good, I think. 
All right, so we're also going to take a look at uh, Seeking Alpha just to get some other ideas of uh, how the company is doing. So the one thing is that their stock price is really down. They're down 37% uh, this year, and they're down about 37% year to date. Um, so that's really not uh, a good sign, but at the same time, uh, they are in the financials, and those companies have really been hit hard by this uh, pandemic. And so uh, hopefully they'll be able to recover and maybe this is a good buying opportunity as they're beaten down so much, but in that case, you have to believe in their long term and uh, believe in their ability to recover quickly once we move past this. Uh, so that's the one concern there. And then also the one thing I don't really like a lot is their five year dividend growth rate is 1.48%, but uh, their payout ratio is very healthy. Um, so that's a good thing to see that their payout ratio is really nice, but um, Hopefully, since they got that payout ratio lower, like I was saying before, they'll be able to increase their dividends a little bit more. But um, at this point, uh, especially with the pandemic, I really can't expect them to do uh, much in the next year or two. But maybe after that, they can start increasing it more aggressively. Um, and they are in a risk graph. They've been increasing their dividends for over 25 years. Looks like 28 here. Uh, so that's good to see. Um, they, they have a track record of increasing it. But as we saw before, again, that uh, they were only increasing it by about a cent every year. So, um, you know, it is what it is. Um, they do pay a really nice yield of 6.86%. Um, so that's another factor to take into consideration, I guess. But um, that growth rate, I really don't like it. But I think moving forward, they should be able to do a better job of uh, growing that dividend. So this is my Fidelity portfolio. And it's actually funny. Now PPs United is my smallest holding at 1049. Uh, it sort of had a negative week this week, I think, and Nokia had a fairly good week this week. So um, looks like Nokia now passed it. I have seven cents more equity in Nokia than I do in PBS United. You can see I just have one share here. Um, so that's my position. It's pretty small. Um, I don't really think I'm looking to add to it anytime soon, uh, but that's where I stand on PBS United. And you can see that Carnival Cruise Line will probably be my next uh, stock analysis video for my portfolio. So stay tuned for that one. As for my thoughts on Peepus United, I think that if you're looking to start a position in this company and you believe in it long term, then it's definitely at a very good discount from where it was uh, a year ago or even six months ago. So in that regards, I think it's at definitely a good price, but um, that's really only if you believe in it long term. I mean, I definitely believe in this company. Um, I like it, but right now I'm just happy with my position. I don't really like the financial sector uh, all too much as a whole. I mean, there's definitely some good companies there, but it's just not my favorite sector. And I do have some other investments in financials, um, as you guys probably know, but right now uh, with my position, I'm just going to stay put. Uh, maybe if it dropped down a lot more, I would be looking to add, but right now I'm just kind of content with where it is. But if you guys are looking to potentially start a position in this company, I would definitely encourage you to do a lot more research than I went over in this video. Um, I was just kind of going over some of the surface level financials and um, some of the interesting things uh, to look at surrounding this company. So if you are looking to start a position, definitely do a lot more research. Definitely don't take my advice as financial advice because I'm just a random guy on the internet. So definitely do your own research. The quote of the video is, my life is what it is and I can't change it. I can change the future, but I can't do anything about the past. And this quote is from Alex Trebek. Uh, he's the host of Jeopardy and he recently passed away. Uh, so I just wanted to do, pay a little tribute to him. I was really a fan of the program. I liked watching it with my parents and family. And um, I really think uh, what he has to say here is really important that you gotta focus on the future. You can't uh, dwell on the past. You just gotta push, keep pushing forward. That's going to be it for today's video. I hope you enjoyed this stock analysis and I just want to thank you for taking your time to watch it. Um, if you guys do have any questions um, about your spreadsheets or maybe problems you're having there, just ask them in the comments and I'll try to make a video about it. I feel like I haven't really been making uh, videos about my spreadsheets and tips on those uh, as recently, but I just feel like I've kind of gone over everything in my spreadsheet so far and um, I haven't really had any people ask any major questions. So um, I had, just haven't really had anything else to share, but um, if you guys have questions, I can definitely make a video and help explain some of those uh, problems that people might be having and just how to solve those.